I knew it was coming, and I would have said that either way, um, you know, uh, before and after. But uh, it's such a good time, DJ, that we actually spent the entire flight home next to each other by <laughs> mere happenstance, and we actually were talking to each other after all of that. Wow. You there, Daniel? Shoot for me. Rich, I thought when I got home, I was going to open up the door and you were just going to be sitting in my family room. <laughs> who, are, who are people not in my kitchen, right? To use the Cheers reference there? <laughs> yes, yeah, Cliff Clavin. Uh, there you go. Nice. See, another thing. It's just, it's kind of refreshing that you would get pop culture references after Stripes because that was the way that I was be dealing with Mike Mayock for 15 years. You know? But did you notice when, when uh, I don't know if Rockman noticed, but when Mike came into the booth, uh, Rich has like a switch. It just like automatically flipped, and then he started like dialing the references back more into like the <laughs> 80s and maybe even into the 70s. And Mike was picking them up. It just Rich has that ability to switch gears. You know what? Uh, on, uh, unless it's my run, but we'll get to that uh, in in short order. Uh, the story of the combine uh, is what, in your estimation? Well, I mean, it's crazy because he just he didn't do anything on the field, but Kyler Murray was still the buzz. I mean. You know, I always ask what the story of the combine is. To me, it's what people are talking about in the evenings when we leave the stadium, and that was the that was the dominant conversation. You know, what he was tall, he's five ten, which we consider tall after a five nine expectation. Um, he was two hundred and seven pounds, which was bigger than expected. And then, you know, the conversation shifts to what are the Arizona Cardinals going to do? Um, are they going to take him? Are they going to trade Rosen? Or is this all a giant smoke screen? I mean, that was. That was the dominant conversation the entire time down there. And what's your sense? I started by saying there's no chance that the Cardinals have already made their decision. Zero. Um, so what's your take on that? Uh, there's so much information floating around, and it's, it's, nothing's consistent. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm leaning towards the Kyler Murray thing. Um, I'm leaning towards that happening. So that's just uh, – you know, I would say if you're going to put it on a scale, I would say 70 to 75 percent of the people I talk to um, in all different realms in the football or in the football world have believe it. So um, I'm going to trust them on that and that their gut instinct there. So I, I do think there's a really good chance Kyler Murray is going to be the first pick. What would you do, DJ? You're the general manager. Let's put you in Steve Kahn's shoes. Uh, what would you do, knowing that the owner just won and done the coach? Um, yeah. and knowing that you've got a new head coach that um, nobody really saw coming. So what mm -hmm. would you do knowing that there is a possibility of Kyler Murray, but that would require you to have to trade Rosen. You'd have to trade him. You don't know when you'd have to trade him. Would you trade him after the draft? I mean, what would you do or just stay pat knowing Rosen, the evaluation about the next step in the National Football League here? Yeah, I mean, personally, I have a higher grade on Josh than I did on Kyler, and they're totally different players. Um, so if it was me, I would I would continue to try and build around Josh and give him some help, um, you know, especially looking up front along the offensive line and free agency being aggressive, um, being able to, to get that defense cranked up again. Um, you've got a chance, in my opinion, to get the best player in the draft in Bosa. Um, that's where I would go. Now, the reason you know, there's a difference between what I would do and then also understanding they have a, if, they have, if this is their plan, you know, if you hire Cliff Kingsbury and you are going to go all in um, around his offense and around his system and, and go for it, then I understand the Kyler Murray thing in that, in that situation because of the, the relationship between those guys, how he would fit into what they want to do. And the mere fact that as bad as they are in the offensive line in the short term, Tyler Murray will be able to get away from some of that that uh, the Josh wouldn't be able to get away from. But I, I think you get in trouble when you can kind of make these short-term decisions. I think Josh Rosen has a chance to be a long-term quality NFL starter. And personally, I would do my best to try and build up around him. Okay. Now let's just say Daniel Jeremiah here on the Rich Eisen Show. What would you give up for Rosen if you're another team out there and you think that he is available um, and that, or you are buying – the, if you will, smoke screen, if that's what it is from Arizona, and you go knock on the door, and you know, what's the Godfather offer? You think, if you're if you're the general manager looking for Rosen? Well, I mean, I know I know some things were out there saying they would not be able to get a first round pick. That would be shocking to me if they could not get a first round pick. If I'm, if I'm picking at 13 um, and on Miami, he's going to be better than anything you're going to see at 13, in my opinion. If I'm 15 in Washington, he's going to be better than anything you're going to see there at 15. Um, and if for some reason 
they can't get any of those teams to bite. I would I would sure think the Patriots down there at thirty two. Uh, I mean that's uh, that would be a that would be a very short discussion for me. Yes, I would do it. <laughs> Daniel Jeremiah here on the Rich Eisen show with the hottest rumor coming out of the combine that uh, the two of us sat next to each other all weekend long on the NFL Network, bringing home to you. Okay, so pound the table for Nick Bosa to Arizona. What would that look like for that team? Well, I mean, I just I think you look at the best teams in the league. Um, they're good up front offensively. They can rush the quarterback, and they get great quarterback play. So, uh, to me, when you look at rushing the quarterback, he's as skilled as any rusher that's come out in a long time. Now, he's not as dynamic as, you know, the Mario Williams, the Julius Peppers, the Clownies, the Garretts. He's not as just a physical freak like those guys, but he's as skilled of a pass rusher. Uh, with his hands, he can take over a football game. You know, people look at the 40 time, and I believe it was a 479, but his 10 split was tied for the third best in the entire group. Uh, and that's what you're looking for in those defensive linemen. So I've got somebody that's got a great get off, he's got great hands. Um, he looks like he's fully healthy after the injury that he suffered during the season. And it doesn't hurt with the genes when you look at what Joey has done. Um, so to me, that's a, that's a pretty darn good football player to throw in the mix and throw him off to the channel of Jones in a division where you got to go after Jared Goff and, and Garoppolo and Russell Wilson. That would be a, that'd be a nice, uh, that'd be a nice front to build around. Let's talk DK Metcalf a little bit here, Daniel. Uh, only 67 catches. We know he had an injury, a neck injury, a serious injury from which he clearly came back to blow out the combine. Um, and one of the more moving moments was our NFL Network cameras capturing him crying, FaceTiming with a family member, we, we believe. Um, so what's the evaluation on him? Is he closer to Julio Jones or Mike Mamula? If you get my meaning here. <laughs> That's quite the scale. I know. Uh, I thought you were going to go Tyrone Calico. No, uh, no, no, no. Look, <laughs> I mean, what's what, what? I mean, look, he, he clearly rocked up. You called him the human Batman suit. He was incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the measurable that everyone was talking about outside of uh, Kyler Murray's height was the body fat measurement of DK Metcalf. Uh, what do you think? Well, I mean, first of all, I think when people look at combine workout warriors, the way I look at that is, okay, what was the evaluation before you got to Indianapolis? And in my top 50 list, DK Metcalf, I believe was number 16 coming into the combine. So this is not somebody that we had as a fourth round pick. He ran really fast and everybody's overreacting and saying he's going to be a first round guy. I and mean, he was, he was already in that first round mix. Now he's not, he's not a perfect player you know julio jones had more production was more polished coming out but he is big physical and fast and he does have some big plays on tape there's just not a ton of production because of the injuries so um that's what you factor in i think the ability is there you know what you're buying you're getting a vertical threat um you're getting somebody you can use down in the red zone now is he going to be as polished running comebacks and curls and gonna explode out of breaks like that's not what you're getting so to me it comes down to which team does he go to and how do they plan to use him? And I, uh, spoiler alert, Rich, I, uh, I've already done a new mock draft this morning. Okay. What do you got for me? Uh, be coming out soon, but I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you the whole mock draft, but I'm gonna give you this one on the topic here. DK Metcalf. When I look at what the Buffalo bills could use and where they pick at number nine, and you look at Josh Allen who can throw the ball over the moon. And now you've got a big explosive receiver like that that can get on top of coverage. Um, and then you look at Josh Allen, who maybe is not the most pinpoint accurate. You have a frame like DK Metcalf has. Uh, to me, he's just a perfect fit in that offense to grow with Josh Allen. All right, nice little Christmas gift early hey. underneath the Buffalo Bills tree for the Mafia. Not a there. DeMarcus Christmas gift, by the way. Ah, well done. So um, you got to give me something. I mean, you got Kyler Murray number one in your mock draft, DJ. Come on, give me something. Well, I mean, I, we had that we had that conversation, and you kind of heard where I was where I was hearing. And I do my mock drafts not off of necessarily what I would do, but off of what I'm hearing around the league and what I expect to happen. Right. So I think you can uh, you can do that. Math. I can do that math. All right. So then um, that'll be on NFL.com later. Okay. Yeah, NFL.com. Be on the lookout. That's coming. Be on the lookout for all of that. Um, coming out of the combine, what are the pro days that you're going to? Give me the what, what's the Daniel Jeremiah pro day yeah, schedule, so we could sense yeah, obviously what you think uh, of what you one, saw. First one is Oklahoma, so 
obviously it doesn't get bigger than that. You get a chance to see Kyler Murray. Um, it sounds like he is going to do everything. So I know Lamar Jackson did not run a 40 last year. I'm excited to see Kyler Murray do that, get out there and throw it around a little bit. So that'll be a fun one. I'm going to go see uh, Alabama and their whole host of players. I'm going to see Ohio State. Oh, I, I, I mean, are they fast, by the way? Is Ohio State, they have fast players? <laughs> they have fast uh, players, man. So did Oklahoma. So did Miss, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, so did Ole Miss. So did Mississippi State. I mean, how did those teams you're not? You're Michigan guys. Uh, you know, but how did those how did those teams not win in the SEC this year? I mean, with all of these kids yeah. coming to the next level. I know that, that might be yeah, a naive yeah. question to ask, but it was that's all I kept thinking throughout the broadcast all weekend long. Yeah, it was pretty uh, – it was interesting. Well, I think if you could have combined the Mississippi State defensive players with the Ole Miss offensive players, <laughs> you have one heck of a team. <laughs> <laughs> you could have an all-Mississippi team. Um, okay, so you're going to yeah. go from Oklahoma – are you going to Clemson? Should I tell Dabo in the uh, hour three to look out for you? Know, you? I, don't think, I don't think I'm going to Clemson because all those guys worked out. Okay. I'm going to go uh, – I'm going to go see Duke with, you know, see Daniel Jones. I'll go to Missouri to see Drew Locke. Um, there's another one in there. That I'm Are doing. those two first round um, picks, I'm you think? To figure out. I might go to Delaware because Mr. Adderley did not work out. Right. So I might get out there. So you'll see the old Blue Hens. Do you think both of those quarterbacks you mentioned, Duke's Jones and Missouri's Locke, are first rounders this year? Well, in the uh, mock draft that I sent in about four minutes ago, I had one of the two in there. Okay. I'm not liking all the teasing. I'm, teasing the heck. I'm, really I'm teasing not liking it. I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it because at some point, you know, we're going to find this stuff out. I'm trying to give the Rich Eisen show hey, viewers hey, and listeners a little hey, nugget here. I think, I think one of them's a lock. Okay. Hey, it is. well done, Daniel. Very, very well done. Hey, great job this weekend. It was great. It really was. And thanks for uh, timing the run. That was pretty neat to have you involved. Oh, to me, the, to me, you asked me like what was the highlight of the week, and I had a blast up there. Uh, such a fun time, but there was nothing better than hanging out with Connor uh, down on the field and 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 getting to visit with him uh, throughout that process. What a neat kid, and what an awesome, awesome thing you've built here for St. Jude, and it was uh, it was a pleasure just to be a very, very small part of no, it. No, you were a big part of it. Well. I, 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 m- Less because Connor Rye, the uh, 12-year-old from St. Jude, uh, his hand time was much more Rich Eisen friendly than yours, to be very honest. (laughs) I think he was hoping for for like a Rich Eisen mug out of that. No, no. He wants something. (laughs) I'm so glad you got to meet him. That was a fun time, and the uh, fundraising was through the roof. I'm I'm about to to get to that. So I appreciate the time, DJ. All right, travel safe. Th- you, travel safe. Travel safe throughout the uh, yeah. the uh, pro day season. Here's Daniel Jeremiah. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.